was just reading Like Water for Chocolate. It's a marvelous book set during the time of the Mexican Revolution. It tells the story of a, a young woman named Tita who, uh, oh, what am I doing? I mean, surely you have read the book too. Now, I was just in the middle of chapter five, by far the best to this point. This is the chapter where the revolutionaries come to the ranch, and it's also the chapter where Tita finally loses her temper at Mama Lena. Now, in this chapter, I've already noticed that there is a lot of symbolism and themes that have been used. I think that this is a very strong literary technique. So, well, instead of my rambling on about the chapter, why don't we head back to the living room and I'll read it to you. Ah. Now, I'm just going to continue reading from where I left off. Um, to keep from getting confused. Now, chapter 5, May, Northern Style Chorizo. When the revolutionaries arrived, they were met by Mama Elena at the entrance of the house. She had a shotgun hidden in her petticoats. Good afternoon, senora. Are you the owner of this ranch? We've come to ask you to volunteer to help the cause. Don't take anything from my house! <laughs> Understood, my general. Yeah, I got a little chicken. Oh, come on, man. That's gross, man. The next shot is for you. Don't worry. No one is going to kill you or fail to respect you. That is for sure. Such a valiant woman will always have my admiration. Oh, man. I'm not staying around here. he was born, her maternal instincts kicked in. When he was taken away, she didn't know what to do with herself. She needed to find something to replace him. Now, the pigeon worked out just fine, and it even says, though it wasn't quite the same, it was close enough. So for her, the pigeon symbolizes maternity and her desire to have her own child. We shall continue. Behind Mama Elena came Chencha, weeping unconsolably. <laughs> Roberto is dead. Also, it mentions that Mama Elena has a fear of heights, a fear of change, a fear of losing control of her daughter. As soon as she saw the doctor, she ran to the corner and curled up in a fetal position. No one knew how much she told Dr. Brown during the hours he spent there, but toward dark he brought Tita down, now dressed, and she got into his carriage and drove off with him. 
Chencha, weeping, was running alongside the carriage as they left and barely managed to toss onto Tita's shoulders the enormous bedspread she had knit during her endless nights of insomnia. Now, the bedspread, of course, represents Tita's hopes and dreams throughout the novel, hence the reason that it is constantly growing and getting more, as they say, kaleidoscopic in color. Now, when Chencha tosses it on to her shoulders, that reminds us that Chencha does not want Tita to give up hope, that she must always believe in herself. And that is why, throughout the course of the novel, Tita becomes more confident. Tita grabbed it so tightly that there was no choice but to let it drag behind the carriage like a huge train of a wedding gown that stretched for a full kilometer. Tita used any yarn she happened to have in her bedspread, no matter what the color, and it revealed a kaleidoscopic combination of colors, textures, and forms that appeared and disappeared as if by magic in the giant cloud of dust that rose up behind it. That's the end of Chapter 5. And that is all we have time for today. But until next time, I am Morgan Freeboy.